Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. If you clicked on this video, there's a chance that you might be panicked that it might rain on your wedding day. First of all, that was a lot of energy coming out of my mouth just now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to all the new people, they're like, who is this chick and why is she yelling at me? Second of all, um, take a deep breath. Maybe I should do that too. <sighs> I know this is a huge concern and this question gets asked all the time, so I figured it would be a great idea just to sit down and make a whole video about it to hopefully assuage some of your concerns and help you get ready just in case there might be some rain on your wedding day. Also, uh, anyone know where this poncho's from? My lifestyle homies know. Lifestyle homies? What does that even mean? Uh, if you're not following me on my personal channel, what are you doing? Get on over there, hang out. It's so much fun. We got such a fun little group over there um, and I'd love to see you and then you can Figure out where I got this poncho. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. The whole strategy when it comes to rain on your wedding day is best summed up by the old adage, hope for the best, plan for the absolute worst, okay? First of all, you know, like just as like a blanket disclaimer, rain on your wedding day is not the worst thing that can happen. It is totally not, and I know it causes a lot of us to panic and really get concerned if there is even a whisper or a chance of rain coming down on this day that you have been working to plan for a very, very long time. But don't fret, I've got some action steps that we can go through just in case there could be some drizzle on your day. So I have a list of six steps that you should be working through when it comes to uh, planning for a rainy wedding day. First of all, location. Like that's probably pretty obvious. Um, talk to your venue. If you are working with a formal venue like a, or a specific venue, anything that's not a backyard or a park, uh, talk to your venue. See if they already have some sort of rain contingency plan set up in place. Um, some places do, some places don't. A lot of that has to do with your geographic area and how often you encounter rain. So like I'm from Southern California, what is rain? A little bit falls from the sky, everyone loses their gosh darn minds. Uh, but now here in Texas, thunderstorms are like a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll run into out here, more likely than I would in California, is a lot more venues that already have a preset rain plan. If your venue or your location does not have a preset rain plan, that's okay. That is not cause for panic. That's when you would turn to the idea of creating your own waterproof space. <laughs> That was a weird way of phrasing it, but I, but it's true. Where you would want to get a tent, ideally with sides, and a floor. And that's when you start to kind of navigate and look around the property. What is a high point on the property? You don't want to be down in a ditch. Well, of course, like you probably wouldn't want, to get, wouldn't want to get married in a ditch anyways. But wherever you're hosting your event, if you are going to bring in a tent and a floor, because it's going to be super muddy, so you will want to invest in a floor, you are going to want to have it on higher ground rather than lower ground for obvious reasons, because you don't want a mudslide coming through your reception. Remember, a light drizzle is okay, but if there is going to be a literal deluge of rain, a downpour on your guests, miserable guests do not stay. So if you want your guests to stay for this day that you've worked so hard to plan and spent so much money on, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you've provided a suitable, comfortable space for them to hang out in. And we're not being extra bougie about this, we're just being nice and making sure they're not soaked to the bone. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely not that attitude of like, no, they're gonna show up and enjoy our love story no matter what because if they're soaked to the bone and they're cold and they're miserable, they're gonna leave. So I think it's kind of nice and kind of important to make sure that we provide adequate space for them to uh, enjoy your event comfortably. Let's go ahead and take a beat and talk about tents for just a minute. Tents are definitely not cheap. They have a very high deposit rate, which could be up to 50%, just to hold the tent for your wedding date. And more often than not, that deposit is non-refundable, which the tent rental companies kind of have to do because could you imagine if there is rain on one certain weekend, then 50 people call to reserve a tent, but they only have 10 of them. And then five of those people cancel and then 40 other people don't get access. The, I'm not explaining this well, <laughs> but they do that for a reason. So you cannot just call and reserve a tent and then let it go. It is a big and not so cheap decision uh, and you will likely be locked into it once you say yes. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. And then lastly about the location, if you were going to have your ceremony outside um, and your reception inside and you now need to keep everything inside, this is a good time to talk to your venue about a shuffle or a flip. And that's where they take the space that your ceremony is happening in, tear everything down and then set up your reception, usually within that cocktail hour time frame. This does mean a lot of people are working really, really fast in a very short amount of time to pull this off. Um, and some venues are not equipped to handle this. 
Some venues do have staff that they can bring in to do this or already on site. And some venues will look at you like, what's, what's, a, what's a shuffle flip? I don't wanna check, uh, what is that? So it's definitely helpful to ask these questions. So you know if the eyes of the venue and you're just kind of like glaze over when you, when you start talking about this stuff, that like you'll need to come up with a plan. Number two, trust your vendors. You have spent all this time vetting these people, um, or I hope you have, <laughs> to figure out if they're a good fit for you and for your event. And now it's time to let go and trust them. There will be some adjustments that need to be made. You will have some adjustments that are made to your timeline. So trust that your wedding planner or your coordinator is gonna masterfully handle that for you. Of course, always feel free to express your concerns and ask questions. If nothing else, it will put your mind at ease. But if you've hired professionals for these categories, I highly encourage that you let go and trust them to do their jobs because they've likely seen this before. It may be your first time having a rainy wedding day, but it won't be theirs. Your caterer also might recommend some food adjustments to uh, counteract how cold it might be outside. So just another thing to kind of keep in mind, which is why it's super important to take your time, vet your vendors, and when it comes down to it, you just gotta trust that they are gonna do the job that you've hired them to do. Three, choose how you look very wisely. <laughs> Obviously, waterproof mascara is a great call on your wedding day no matter what in case you get all sorts of emotion. You kind of want the, the mascara to stay where it's intended next to your eyeballs. But this is a great time to chat to your makeup artist about really long-lasting items and potentially waterproof ones. Because if you're paying that much money for someone to put stuff on your face, you're going to want to make sure it stays there. You're also going to want to choose a hairstyle that is wise in this kind of weather, um, which ideally means probably not down in loose tendrils uh, that will go frizzy or flat like that. So you know your hair well enough to know how it will respond in inclement weather. So um, be sure to pick a hairstyle, ideally something that's up so it to doesn't totally get destroyed by all the water and the wet, and ideally a style that will help you either combat the frizz or the flatness that your hair experiences when it's a little damp outside. <laughs> Number four, think accessories. Um, let's talk about the ones for you first. You're going to want some sort of shawl or cover up or, or poncho. <laughs> Just maybe not this one. This one wouldn't be very effective at like keeping keeping the water off But you know like those Disneyland style ponchos like that would be not a look for your wedding day But it'd be kind of funny, right? Be sure to have something on hand that will keep you and your very pretty and likely very expensive dress as dry as possible This is also a great opportunity to get one of those really cute super Instagrammable clear umbrellas because those are such a vibe <laughs> I love those things so much. And the photos that you get with some of those are super, super, super cute. So um, have one on hand. In fact, have quite a few umbrellas on hand in case some of your guests forget them. Last thing, your last accessory for yourself that you're gonna wanna think about it are your shoes. On a rainy day, it is not the time for three inch stilettos. You can wear those while you are inside, but when you are outside walking around, you might wanna consider getting galoshes or some sort of boot or shoe that does a lot better on slippery ground. Again, you paid probably a pretty penny for that dress. You don't need a giant asphalt mark on the side of it from where you tripped and fell because it was too slick outside and your heels were too skinny. It's not, it's not the time that, to fall over or, or take a chance on footwear. It's just not a good call. And then you're also gonna wanna think about accessories for your guests. Obviously, we already mentioned umbrellas. You're gonna wanna have a couple of those on hand for the guests that might have forgotten them. Oh, and or for your bridal party, especially when you're doing the large photos. It's nice when all the umbrellas are matching. Uh, just a little pro insider tip, it'd be worth investing in quite a few of them so you don't have like a random blue one and then a polka dot one, but they're all like cohesive and cute. Maybe that's the type A perfectionist in me that wants all of them to match, but I know some of you hear me on that one, right? Okay. Thanks. You also might want to consider getting some sort of warm cover up for your guests as well as a gift. Pashminas are great. Um, little throw blankets, those are fun too. Uh, those costs do add up. So obviously if you have a really, really high guest count, that's probably not gonna be a good call for you. Instead, I would suggest really leaning into uh, warm drinks for people to enjoy, like spice cider or hot chocolate or hot toddies, something along those lines to really help guests warm up. And then last accessory that you're gonna need, or last accessory you might need would be um, heat lamps, depending on the temperature. Um, if it drops below 65 degrees, it is a good call to have heaters on hand. Uh, 65 degrees does not sound that cold, and I, I said this in like the fall wedding video or whatever. Um, I'm aware of that. Some people might hear that and be like, what, Jamie, that's... <laughs> Why? It's 65 is not that bad. Sure, but let's return back to the if your guests are uncomfortable, they leave commentary. Um, it might be okay for you, but there will be some guests in the crowd that are very grateful to have some heaters present if it dips to 62, 57, and or lower. So. But again, we want to ensure that your guests are going to be extremely comfortable and don't leave because you spent a lot of money for them to be there. Oh, and of course, like you actually want to hang out with them. <laughs> 
Number five, let your guests know. This is one of the reasons I'm a huge fan of wedding websites because it's super easy to jump on there and make some adjustments and be like, hey, FYI, inclement weather, like it looks like it might rain on our wedding day. Um, we suggest that you dress accordingly. If you are going to still try to soldier on and have it outside, you should let your guests know so they can bring their own umbrellas. If you are planning to host your event in a season that is usually known for rain regardless, it might be a good idea to include like an in case of rain card in your invitation suite or um, page and or section on your website before you even get close enough to the date to determine whether that's gonna be an option or not. And this is just a great way to let your guests know what the general plan might be uh, should rain happen. And number six, Last but not least, it's the very first thing I said. <laughs> Hope for the best and plan for the absolute worst. Now's where we have like the true heart to heart chat. You cannot control the weather on your wedding day at all. Um, and that can be a hard thing for people to let go. Sit down and visualize your day being completely rained out, like the worst most amount of rain you could possibly imagine falling from the heavens on that day. And right about now you're thinking, Jamie, why do I come to you for advice? That's awful. Why would you say that? Because, because, hold on, wait a sec. Because most likely it will not look like that. Like it won't. So if you plan and visualize the absolute worst, anything, anything is going to be better than that. I also want to give you permission and say that it's okay to be sad. It is okay to be sad that the weather will not be what you anticipated it to be on your big day. Sit in that moment. Feel those feelings. Grieve the sunshine on your wedding day, and then find a way to move past that. A wedding day uh, vibe, mood, what have you, is typically set by the attitude of the couple. So if you go into this just wanting to celebrate with all your favorite people, everyone is going to feel that and really, really enjoy the day, no matter what the weather looks like outside. And you know what? A lot of people believe that rain on your wedding day is actually a sign of good luck. And some of the best wedding photos happen when water's falling from the sky. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna give you a real talk real fast. Something goes wrong at every single event every single one. So if you know rain's coming, at least this is something you can prepare for, check it off your list and be like, there's the thing that's gonna go wrong. It's perfectly fine. And then we just enjoy your day. So that's all we have for today, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys. <laughs> Honestly, what a way to start off Vlogmas with a bang, right? Straight into advent calendars. We didn't even warm you up with any fun family activities beforehand. <laughs> Welcome to Vlogmas. Way to get this started. <laughs> are we are we Texans now or what, guys?